case, what we wanted to do was to attempt to make human airway tissue in a dish. And one of the reasons for that is to study a whole set of diseases, some of them very common, like COPD or emphysema or lung cancer, and some of them much rarer, like interstitial lung disease or cystic fibrosis. And the problem is it's very difficult to get human cells from a person's airway or lung. It's quite dangerous. And so we've never really been able to study their cells or interrogate their disease in, uh, in the laboratory very well. So here what we did was we tried to pick a disease that was very well defined, and that, that's cystic fibrosis, which is a disease that affects young people. It used to be that you died when you were a baby um, or a young child. And then medicine got better, antibiotics were used, and a number of other therapies, and now people make it into their 30s and 40s. Some folks die earlier, and some folks are able to last longer. But the gene for cystic fibrosis was identified quite a long time ago, and there was initially some enthusiasm about gene therapy, but that um, hasn't been realized uh, for quite some time. What has happened very recently was very exciting. The first drug called VX770 has just been approved by the FDA for the treatment of um, cystic fibrosis. But that drug was targeting a very rare mutation of all the mutations that cause cystic fibrosis. And it's wonderful to see that it's working. It's the first of its kind since the gene was cloned. But what we wanted to do was work on a variety of mutations, and amongst them is one called Delta 508 that affects the majority of patients with cystic fibrosis. And it's, a, it's really a different kind of disease. The mutation causes something different. So if we could find a way to study this disease in the laboratory, we'd really affect a whole slew of people. And so what we did, we were very fortunate to be at a hospital with a cystic fibrosis clinic, and we collaborated intimately with the clinicians who helped us identify patients. And with my colleagues, Kieran Musanuru and Chad Cowan, who are also in the Harvard Stem Cell Institute, and um, we were able to take skin biopsies from those patients, make stem cells from them, and then one of my, one of my postdoctoral fellows, Homme Mao, was able to go through a series of steps that converted that patient stem cell into actually lung tissue. And she did it very fast. She's a very talented young woman, and she was able to do it in about a year and a half. Um, since we can't study human embryos and don't really want to, um, we used the mouse embryo. We had a no lot of knowledge about how a lung was built in the mouse. And what we did was we transferred that knowledge to the human stem cells, and it worked beautifully. So now we'll have indefinite supplies of human airway epithelium. And in the first instance, what we'd like to do is find a new drug to treat cystic fibrosis um, and to treat the majority of those patients. But we've already extended our studies to think about very rare diseases. There's a disease called a ciliopathy. Um, airways have cilia that beat on the tops of their cells that help you cough out um, things that have been inhaled into your lung and mucus and sputum so that you could live with a pneumonia. And, um, but for some folks, their cilia don't beat very well. And that's another disease that you could model really easily in a dish because you can literally see that the airway epithelium doesn't have cilia that beat well. And we think ciliary dysfunction may not only affect this very rare population of young people, but could have an effect in a disease as common as COPD. So, the, so we start with a rare disease where we really know what's going on, and we might really be able to do things that affect the vast majority of people. But then, once we have these two proofs of principle, I think sky's the limit. In principle, we can study any lung disease that affects the airway. So asthma, bronchitis, lung cancer, the large majority of which actually comes from the airway. And in the future, we'll be able to make the gas-exchanging alveoli. And that will help us study diseases like emphysema. So it's really very exciting. I mean, we're, we think that this is kind of a big step in terms of being able to model human lung disease.